Okay, what do you say we wrap up this project? I feel like we've been working on it for hours. And so let's jump back to uh, Canvas. And so we just printed uh, the booklet and I would like you to fold it, assemble those signatures, which is just one piece of paper folded down that makes multiple smaller pages. I would like you to saddle stitch it and I would like you to trim it and I would like the trim to be the absolute last thing that you do. The last two things you have to do for this project involve color separations and so we are going to create a color separation of any one page of your project. It's going to be a five color separation because this project has cyan, magenta, yellow, black and a spot color that I added so that you could kind of see how that works. Uh, all uh, color separations that you create for our class, whether I say it or not, should always include all printer's marks because you have no idea which color separation represents which color unless you create the color separations with the page information. Again, you can create postscript files of this, but the intention is that you will physically print these, and so um, I would prefer that you print them. And so if you come to me and say that the steps that I'm following to create postscript files are not working on your home computer, my response to you is going to be, I appreciate that you are trying to create postscript files, but the expectation is printing. And so if your postscript files are not working, then I need you to go physically print the project. The last thing I would like you to do after you have output your color separations is I would like you to identify which one happens to be the magenta color separation. And on the magenta color separation, I would like you to identify those printer's marks that we talked about earlier in the lecture. I want you to circle it and tell me that this is a trim mark or a crop mark. I want you to tell me it's a bleed mark, a registration mark. You don't have to identify every single one. So circle one registration mark and say, this is a registration mark. And circle one crop mark and say, this is a trim or a crop mark. Once you're done, we'll talk about submitting that and we'll see how long my video goes. Maybe I'll get that all done in this one video, but there'll probably be one more after this. And so from InDesign, let's close out of this guy, you can create uh, color separations by printing um, to a physical printer or printing to a postscript file, and I'll show you both options. If you choose file print and you're going to print to a, a physical copy, you need to make sure that you choose the right printer and the printer must have postscript capabilities because the postscript feature of the printer is what allows you to create the color separations. The settings that you're going to choose are that you want one copy but most importantly you only want to print one of the pages and so I'm going to choose page four just a random number you can choose if you like the tiger the best print the tiger page but only print one page because for every one page of your document you're going to get five sheets of paper. Under setup, always decide what page, uh, what paper size you want, and I want U.S. letter. Um, I said in the previous video that I want you to always hit scale to fit, and if it's greater than 100%, I would like you to put it back onto 100%. But if for some reason this was less than 100%, I would like you to leave it there. If it says 94%, leave it. And then I want you to always center your images on your page. Um, whether I tell you to or not, I always want them centered on the page. Under the Marks and Bleeds tab, we're going to include all printer's marks and we're going to include the document bleed settings. You can see a visual of what's happening over here on the left-hand side. And then under Output, we're going to change our destination from being a color copy to a separation copy, which will activate the inks panel, which will allow us to turn these printers off, right? And so right now, if I hit Print, I'm not printing any copies. If I turn the printer icon on, I'm getting a color uh, I'm getting a color separation for each of the colors. And so for the first time I print this, I do want all of the colors. But if you mess up labeling the magenta sheet or you accidentally label the yellow sheet instead of the magenta one, you could throw that one out and you could come back and say, I just need another copy of yellow because I ruined that one. And you can just print the one that you're using. It's as simple as that as long as you're connected to a postscript printer. So you can hit print right now and it would print um, five sheets of paper for each one page that you selected to print. Okay, let's do that one more time, but let's create a postscript file. And so if you hit file print and you have the option of creating a postscript file, it will be listed in your print dialog box. Um, sometimes what will happen is that this area will be kind of frozen or locked out. And so what you can do is you can choose um, uh, a different printer and then you can come back to the the postscript option and so I'm gonna leave it as device independent but you could switch to like the HP printer in either one of these drop downs and then go back to the postscript file and it should activate in this window for you. 
We want the same exact settings. And so the only time you can submit a PostScript file is if you can create the same exact settings that would be required of a physical print. And so to do that, we're going to go to setup and we're going to choose US letter eight and a half by 11. We're going to scale the fit. It's not, it doesn't need to be scaled. So we're gonna go back to 100%, which has also centered the image on the page for us. So that's one of the reasons we do that. Under marks and bleeds, we're going to include all printer's marks and document bleed settings. And then under output, we're going to change the destination. We want it to be separations. Now, I need to make sure that the range is only one page because I forgot that. And so under general and range, I'm going to do page four just like I did before. And now if I hit save, it's not going to print, but it's going to allow me to create a postscript file. And so I'm going to find, to find, find, so I'm going to toss it inside there. And I'm going to get rid of .indd because if I leave it there, it'll say current1.indd.ps, which is the file extension for PostScript, and that's just kind of annoying. Now when I hit save, it did its little magic and it worked. And if we go to our package folder, you should have, oh, it's already open. I don't know why I keep clicking on that. A PostScript file that if you open it, it meets the requirements of the project. So this is page four. It's the giraffe image. Let's move this. This is the giraffe image, and if you look at it closely, this first page represents process cyan. The second page represents process magenta, process yellow, process black, and then the last page represents the spot color that we're printing. If I zoom out, if I zoom out here, you can also look at the density of the color being applied. And so without even knowing which is which, we can see that the third page has the darkest colors. And so if I zoom in, and zoom back in there, we can see that process yellow um, has, there's the, the most color in the image comes from process yellow um, on the giraffe page because it's very dark. And if we look at the other pages, we can say, well, there's not as much magenta because it's light gray colors instead of dark gray colors. Another thing to note, look at the color bars and all the page information. They print it on every single page because they're not made out of black, they're made out of 100% of all the colors. And so the, the trim marks and the registration marks and the bleed marks that you see, they are 100% saturation, in this case on this page. It represents 100% of yellow saturation. And on, oh sorry, on that page it's black. On this page it represents 100% yellow saturation of the color. Okay, before I end this video, let me show you how to create a PostScript booklet because I think a lot of people will try to do that as well. And so it's it's the same process. Choose File Booklet. Um, you can go through all the same process. You can print all the pages, chew up saddle stitch, make sure you use the preview. Um, one of the great things about InDesign is it remembered all of our settings, and so there really is not too much that I have to do. But if I go to Print Settings, instead of using the... HP LaserJet, which is physically going to print it, I can change it to PostScript. And now when I go back and hit OK and I print my project, now I've skipped all the steps for setting up the booklet, so you need to go back to the previous video to watch that. But I can do the same thing. I can create another current one. I'm going to do underscore booklet to differentiate the two PostScript files, and I can hit Save. When I go and open the booklet, it's important that when I see the booklet, it looks like what it would look like if it was printed. And so you can see that page 8 is printing next to page 1. Page 2 is printing next to page 7. Um, if I was to print this now, I could choose File Print. I could print it on two sides, and it would back up the way that it's supposed to. And then page, what did I say, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. So 3 and 6 are next to each other, and 4 and 5 are next to each other. If you get individual pages, or if you get um, pages that look like the InDesign document where page one is by itself and then pages two and three are next to each other, that is not an imposed booklet, and so you won't get credit for that as a PostScript file, so keep that in mind. Um, for those of you who are going to create a PostScript booklet file, you do not have to print it, fold it, stitch it, but you should indicate that it's supposed to be done in your submission, like in the comment section. You should say, I have not done those things, but I acknowledge that you should fold and then collate and then you should staple twice and then you should trim on three sides in order to receive credit for that portion of the activity.